Hey everybody, welcome back. We're still on price controls and now we're gonna do a welfare analysis, a full-blown welfare analysis. It's gonna be our first full-blown welfare analysis. I'm a little bit excited because we actually get to finally bring in this thing called the welfare table, okay? Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at a situation actually over here where we got no price ceiling in place, okay? Status quo, we're not putting a price ceiling in. Status quo, no price ceiling in. And we're gonna look at what is the social surplus that we're gonna get. We're gonna be looking at the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, the societal surplus, when that was the situation. But then we're gonna do a policy alternative. We're gonna look at what would happen if we get a price ceiling. And we're gonna analyze that. We're gonna do a welfare analysis of that. And then once we get these two different types of policies, we're gonna look at the delta or the change. When you do a welfare table, and that's what this is called, is a welfare table, it's this delta column that is the most important. So just take a look one more time at the table we've got set up. You've got some policy, we call it the status quo, no price ceiling, and then you've got some policy alternative that you're analyzing, price ceiling, and then you've got a delta column. Over here on the far left, we've got groups, okay? We're gonna be looking at different groups. Eventually, way down the line, okay, the groups that we could be looking at is producer, consumer, external actors, okay, what we call third parties, which you don't even know that much about if you're watching these videos linearly, okay, and the government. So we've got lots of groups we can look at. But for this video, the only two groups that we've got is producer and consumer. We're gonna be very stylized, okay? Stylized means sim simple. Okay, here we've got a market. First thing I've got to do is no price ceiling. Pretty simple, right? Got supply equals marginal cost, demand equals marginal benefit. The market left alone, no price ceiling, no government intervention. I go right to that dot right there, equilibrium sub zero, bring it down, quantity market, bring this over, market clearing price, PM, hopefully we can already see, consumer surplus would be that area, right? There's our MB or demand curve, there's the price right there for the consumer, pretty simple. We've got the producer surplus, there's their marginal cost, or supply curve, there's their per unit revenue, there's the producer surplus, okay? That is no price ceiling. Now we're gonna put in a price ceiling, and the only type of price ceiling that really makes sense is to put in a binding one. Because if you put in a non-binding one, you get the same result as the market left alone. So a binding price ceiling. Remember, a price ceiling is a price maximum. If it's gonna be a binding price ceiling, that means the price ceiling is below the market price, okay? So price ceiling. Gonna draw that over. Now, there's gonna be something very important. I'm gonna need this line right there. Why do I need this? Why do I wanna mark, mark that output level? Because once that price ceiling is put into place, the quantity supplied is only gonna be that horizontal distance, right? At that price, that horizontal distance is the quantity supplied. So that's all that's going to be supplied with the price ceiling. With that said, let's go ahead and mark up this graph right here. We're gonna put letters in marking areas of the graph. A, B, C, D, and E. Those are the only letters we're gonna need. Now, with those letters, we can do the welfare table. Let's go ahead and finish the table. It's not completely done. Since it's our first one, I wanted you to kind of see us make some of it, okay? Take me through the columns. Let's do the rows. What are the groups out there? There's the consumer, and what are we gonna be looking at? Their surplus, okay? And then there's the producer, and what are we gonna be looking at? Their surplus. So I just put consumer surplus, producer surplus. For this stylized example, that's the only people that are gonna be impacted, those market participants. So I'm gonna put in a double line, okay, double line, and then I'm gonna put societal, societal well-being, right there, okay? So right here is the sum of what's ab above. This is the society summing up those two. Here we go. No price ceiling, pretty simple. No price ceiling, consumer surplus is what we wanna fill in. Price market will be the price in the market. That's what the, the consumer is going to have to pay. There's their marginal benefit. We've pretty much already talked about it. They would be getting plus A, plus B. Keep the plus signs, okay? Plus signs and minus signs do matter. So plus A, plus B. Now, the producer surplus. Whoop, I'm over here. Producer surplus, no price ceiling. Producer surplus. So there's the per unit revenue. There's the marginal cost. Plus C, plus D, plus E. Pretty simple plus C, plus D, plus E. Now, what we could do right here is, since it's society, okay, for no price ceiling, we could just write A, plus A, plus B, plus C, plus D, plus E, okay, just write all this, right, sum it up. But it's just simpler just to do this, sigma point up, okay? You're gonna notice we don't really have to fill that in for what we're going to try to accomplish here. Now, 
price ceiling is put in place. We put in a price ceiling, we gotta do consumer surplus. If you're watching all the way to here, great, because this is the part that students have the most difficulty on, okay? Here's the thing. The new price the consumer has to pay is right here. So what students oftentimes want to do is they want to say, hey, that's our new price. There's our demand curve. I'm told that the consumer surplus is the area in between the price and the demand curve, which most of the time, absolutely right, and still has truth even right now. But there is a complexity. Remember this quantity? That's all that's going to be supplied. Once again, I marked this. Now, it's a vertical line, but it's actually denoting a quantity, a horizontal distance, right? Nothing is going to happen to the right of this. Even though demanders or consumers want to buy the good, they can't buy any more than that amount. So they're not going to be able to get any of that area right there because none of these units are going to get sold. So what's the consumer going to get? Yes, it's price demand curve, but nothing passed right here, which leaves us with plus A plus C. That's the one part, like I said, that most students have the hardest time with. So you might want to watch that again, okay? Why we're getting A and C with the price ceiling. Producer surplus, much more straightforward, okay? Still, same premise, right? Price per unit revenue, marginal cost, it's plus E. As far as the societal well-being, we just write sigma and point up, okay? We're just summing those up. Final column, like I said, oftentimes considered the most important column, okay? Consumer surplus. A lot of times your professor is going to say, hey, show me the impact on the consumers. Here it comes. Here's the impact on the consumers. They had plus A plus B. Now they have plus A plus C. Hey, they lost B. They lost B, but they gained C. So minus B plus C, that is showing the impact on the consumers. Now let's show the impact on the producers. Plus C, plus D, plus E. Now they just have plus E with that price ceiling put in place. Producers, nothing but losses, right? Plus C, I'm sorry, not plus C, minus C and minus D. Nothing but losses for the producers. Producers don't like price ceilings, okay? So minus C, minus D. So we've now shown the impact on the consumer, very important, and the impact on the producer. Now the most important of all, this one. I am going to do the sum. When I do the sum, sometimes I cross out the letters where I have a minus and a plus. I'm not going to cross them out because I want to remind us, hey, that's the difference for the consumer, that's the difference for the producer. But I do notice plus C, minus C, so those cancel, so I'm left with minus D, minus, or sorry, minus B, minus D, okay? So what does this mean? This right here, this result tells us that the policy alternative is worse than the status quo policy by the areas minus B, minus D, minus B, minus D. Now, we're gonna just like bring in a little addendum now. This is sometimes gonna be referred to as dead weight loss. I'm gonna tell you that there's complexities so that this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be dead weight loss. What is dead weight loss? It is the amount by which we fall short of max social surplus. So, if we were getting max social surplus with the status quo, which could be the case or could not be the case, there's a lot of complexities that we're not ready for right now. But just like for this video alone, let's assume that this is the max social surplus. Then what we would say minus B and minus D is, hey, that's the amount we fell short of max social surplus, and that's that new term I just introduced dead weight loss. That would be our amount. We fall short of max social surplus and that's what that would be. So just to recap so that we get all the nuance here. Minus B minus D is no matter what the amount that the policy alternative is worse than the status quo as far as the welfare analysis shows us. Now on top of that we will often refer to that as dead weight loss. There's some complexities why it might not be. And when we call it dead weight loss, we're saying, hey, that's the amount we fall short of max social surplus. Anyhow, hope all that made sense to you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.